So I really want to thank you all for attending and please show a very warm appreciation and uh, welcome for our guest speaker, Christiana Baca. Thank you very much. And um, I wonder how you are managing with all the studying you have to do. Can you concentrate while you're fasting? <laughs> Silence! <laughs> Does this mean yes or no? Yes. yes. Don't be shy. Um, yeah, so alhamdulillah, I'm also uh, surprised. It's the longest fast I've ever done in my entire life. Probably some of you have done them whenever they were really long before. And I was wondering myself, will I be able to do it or not? You know, and worried and how painful will it be and so on. But um, very fortunate, alhamdulillah, I didn't even have a headache on the first day. And usually the last few Ramadans I had a headache, so I don't know how. I guess it's a, the key is in drinking enough water. But, um, you know, I, I don't know if everybody... Did everybody watch these uh, Ramadan reflections on, the, on uh, Channel 4? Yeah. Are you watching them? Yeah, really good. So uh, I don't know if you've watched mine, but uh, I'm, I was telling about the, my very first Ramadan, which was a complete disaster. Um, I was a brand new Muslim and went out clubbing the night before. And um, <laughs> uh, I had a few glasses of champagne on top of it. And uh, the next day, uh, I lay in bed with a pounding headache, hungover, and um, they, you know, I was suffering. Obviously, I couldn't eat or drink. And just after lunch, in the early afternoon, I, I finally gave up and I said, no, no, that was not for me. God forgive my bad beginnings. But then, as time progressed, I gave up alcohol. And then the following year, um, uh, meanwhile, what happened was, yeah, I was a brand new Muslim. Um, you know, as uh, Omar was saying, I was at the top of my career interviewing rock stars for a living. Um, you know, when I became a Muslim and in Germany, where I'm from, um, where I'm more, more well known and was some, sort of a pop icon um, when it came out in, and where also the Islamophobia is much worse when it came out in the press that I'm a Muslim a very negative press campaign followed so from being this award winning TV presenter I suddenly turned into public enemy number one has she lost the plot? is she supporting terrorism? You know, uh, is she now going behind the burqa and presenting her shows from behind the burqa? And, uh, you know, it was a very tumultuous year, that very first year of being a Muslim. Uh, and and uh, within a very short space of time, I lost all my programs, my German youth show and the MTV jobs. And it was all uh, pretty traumatic. But uh, in retrospect, I guess it was a blessing in disguise because I couldn't really have carried on with these kind of programs anyway. It's just the way it was done that was a little bit shocking um, because, in fact, they had begged for me to sign for another year. and had a freshly signed contract and suddenly it didn't count, it didn't matter, it wasn't worth the paper it was written on. But uh, that's the media for you, very fickle. And um, you know, and really because of what happened to me at the time, and by the way, I never really got back on German television. Only once with a five minute slot, a lunchtime slot, but nothing like I was before. And because of these misunderstandings, and because people you know, have such bad opinions about Islam in, in Europe, much better here, a little bit of Islamophobia, but by far not as worse as in Europe. That's the reason why I wrote the book, because I wanted to show to people the beautiful Islam that I encountered. You know, how wonderful it is we're sitting here together, we're going to be breaking the fast, some of us will be praying together later on. I mean, you know, we're helping each other, people reaching out and so on. I mean, it's uh, uh, this, the beautiful, the spirit of Islam that I encountered is nothing like uh, how the media in Europe depicts it. And that's the reason why I wrote the book, to show people how I overcame my own prejudices, um, you know, that I may have had against Islam, and, and to take people by the hand, really, and, uh, on my journey, um, which was via Imran Khan. As you know, Imran was uh, the introducer to Islam. Uh, for me, not your usual um, uh, guide to Islam, you may think, or Islam teacher, but, uh, you know, quite effective in my case. Um, because he was just in the process of finding his own faith at the time and was always, you know, on the way to the Islamic bookshops and we read a lot of books together and it was really the first book that uh, touched me and, and, um, and I wanted to carry on reading and I believed in the concepts, I realized this is the truth, but I can't get into the whole long story because I don't know, we, we probably don't have the time for that. 
But um, anyway, after tr uh, researching for three years and traveling a lot to Pakistan, meeting wonderful Muslims from the elite to the very poor people in Hunza or, or in the mountains who you know, had no electricity, no nothing, yet were so generous and so, so hospitable and so kind. Um, I was, you know, touched by everybody I met, really, and um, by the spirit of God um, uh, being everywhere, you know, God being in people's hearts, in people's minds, and the music, and the architecture. It's something really extraordinary that, I, you know, you don't really encounter here. And, and, and also, I'll just tell you one thing, I was really touched how people supported Imran with his hospital. Um, when he built this hospital where the poor people would be treated for free. Every time when our jeep stopped, it was surrounded by people who wanted an autograph, wanted um, um, a picture with him, and a lot of people also just gave him money, even very poor people, dressed in like rags, you know, they pressed a few rupees into his hands. This is for the hospital, you know. And women took off their jewelry to support his hospital. And it is really this friendship and faith that has touched me most, um, you know, this, what you encounter, this warmth, this readiness of people to sacrifice themselves for others. And when, when I now experience it, for example, I had these two publishers, but they both didn't have money to publish the book. So a Pakistani think tank came forward and said, but we believe in your project, it's a good work, it's a be of benefit, you know, so we are going to uh, basically put up the money for the production costs. We're still paying them back, but um, you know, again, they made it happen, you know, and it's, it's just so touching when, when people just mm, support you, or you know, these charity appeals we hear everywhere, where we know that there's a hadith when one part of the body of the Ummah hurts, the rest of the body hurts. So we feel the pain that the people in Syria feel, or in Egypt, and, and we're, we're all extending our, our help as much as we can, and we do the same here. And this is this friendship and faith is one of the best parts of being part of the Muslim community, so-called Ummah. And um, anyway, so basically, so this first year of being a Muslim was very tumultuous. Lost everything. Lost my friendship with Imran. Lost all my jobs. And uh, and here I was a brand new Muslim. You know, and I had to completely re-identify myself, refine myself who I am, you know, as a Muslim, as a European, living in London, and, and you know, now moving forward, you know, what to do with my life. And it's, uh, sometimes it's amazing how, you know, taking up a faith sincerely can turn upside down your life, can turn everything around completely. Um, so, uh, so the, you know, I told you the reason why I wrote the book. And anyway, coming to my second Ramadan, um, I found another job again uh, on pan-European TV, on a satellite television, NBC Europe. And Ramadan was in, in winter, over Christmas at that time. And for, for all of us to uh, be able to have a two-week break, we needed to record twice the amount of shows in Ramadan. So I was thinking, oh my God, how am I going to make it? speaking from morning to evening into the camera, you know, doing voiceovers and all of this without drinking in between. And I tried very, very hard and really, you know, psyched myself up. And alhamdulillah, do, like a miracle happened, I was able to speak all day and, and all evening, you know, without drinking anything in between. And, um, well, actually, probably you know, not all evening because Ramadan finished quite early at that time, but, you know, I mean, it felt like forever. But, um, and, you know, alhamdulillah, I managed. And basically, I discovered a secret, a very important secret of Islam in this experience. And that is um, stated in the hadith that uh, goes like, if you go one step towards God, he comes ten steps towards you. If you walk towards God, he comes running to you. You know, and, and so on and so forth. It's the key is, the secret is, we need to take the first step. So when we really try, and we really try hard, you know, to walk in the way of God. God makes things easy for us. He gives you openings, and 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 you know, and and that is really the blessing. I've met so many people this Ramadan who said, "Oh, I, I just couldn't fast. I just couldn't do it. Oh, I just did ten fasts. You know, that's all I could." Or other people who take medicine, you know. And so all of us sitting here together, we are very, very blessed, I and mean, we must thank Allah that we are able to fast that God has made it possible for us to fast, that God has given us the willpower. And you can, you know, pat yourself on the back that you've done this, you've, you know, you're doing it. And I mean, once you're doing it, actually it's quite easy. I mean, I don't know, do you feel hungry now? 
I don't. I had a little pang of hunger earlier on, but I'm not hungry now. So um, it's 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 just wonderful feeling feeling this. Um, I think if you go one step towards God, He comes ten steps towards you. And if we just only carry on in the spirit, once Ramadan, this holy month, leaves us. And um, you know, I really pray that some of the blessings we've received will will stay with us, and and we we keep the spirit for as long as possible um, till the next Ramadan, really. And um, and you know, just thank you so much for inviting me. I look forward to breaking fast with you, but I want to hear from you a little bit. Um, do you have any Ramadan stories to share or oh, any questions? To, sorry. Okay, that's um, fine. So, how did you, because obviously, like, if you don't have family to break fast with, how did you, you know? Yeah, how thank did you, you so it? much for that question. <laughs> <laughs> it can be a very a lonely path being a convert or a revert, you know. I mean, over the years, there's so many Eids I've celebrated on my own. You know, and most of the time break fast on my own. But uh, alhamdulillah, now that I've mentioned this point, enough times in my talks, I've been invited for iftars and and even for Eid as well. And um, you know, and so it's been wonderful. It's been, um, but you know, yeah. I mean, sohor every morning is on my own, um, and iftar sometimes with friends, sometimes just at home. And you know, because I didn't want to just do a social Ramadan every, every evening. I wanted to also be a bit contemplative and try and read the Quran and you know I went to the mosque a few times for Tarawih prayers so I think it was a really good balance um, what about you do you have your family here um, yeah but well yeah it, they, they are in London but they don't like celebrate because I'm also a revert as well so are you? yeah so I was just yeah curious how yeah. different reverts kind of go about you know, Ramadan because yeah. a lot of the time like this year it's not been too bad because I've been with friends so we just kind of sit but yeah. in previous years it has been on your own so I know it can be really lonely but then you know I've discovered even going I went to the mosque I had to feel a bit of the spirit you know with the tarawi prayer you meet Muslims and so so that's very very nice you know London Central Mosque is also we've just done an iftar there on Saturday I wished you'd known about it you know what, give me your email afterwards, I'll add you to a convert group, um, well, a sort of new Muslim group or whatever, you know. Sometimes there are some activities and so on, and it's, it's nice to be part of a circle of friends. You know? So there was a nice little lift at the Central Park, Regions Park Mosque, and they welcome everybody. Do you know about their circle? They do a circle every Saturday. I've heard of it, yeah. yeah it's yeah. worth going and you meet a lot of other people mm -hmm. and so on. But it's, uh, it's remarkable, you know, I mean, we, have, we all have so much in common. And it's nice to just meet some people, some you know, kindred spirits sometimes and share experiences and so on. Do you want to talk about it? Oh, right. I just find it weird how um, it's actually been so hot this year and I think it's been one of my best ones now. So I've actually just like completely like went with my jeans and just like completely discarded and everything. But I find it really weird, it's been so hot and yet I haven't I haven't hung you once this whole time I've done. I find it really weird. It's a miracle. It's from Allah, but, isn't it? Yeah. This other day, the other day, this, I mean, I usually always get a headache. This year, nothing. And this girl who usually gets migraines, she said this year also nothing. It's amazing. Maybe God helps when he knows the circumstances are tougher than normal. <coughs> so, and are you all Muslims here? Or are you some of you not Muslims? We're not. You're not. We're visitors. Nice to see you. We're Londoners. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's, that's a rarity. <laughs> that's very nice that you came by. Is it your first time at the Ramadan Temple? Um, I visited here a week ago, and I brought my friends. Yes. So, have you? Um, what's your impression so far then of Muslims and and Islam and so on? Uh, most of the Islam, I've had impressions for years, but this is the first time I've come to the Ramadan Temple. Yeah. It's great. It's wonderful, yeah, absolutely. Well, I hope you'll um, enjoy my book. I love a little bit more. I want to say a huge, huge thank you to Christiana, please. Thank you so much. I hope Christiana could be with us for a few moments after the call to prayer to sign books and allow some time as well for people who want to buy a copy as well. And eat. Yes, and eat as well, yes. Um,